Maxim Wenger, of, may I call you Maxim. It's a great honor to have you uh, in Pietra Santa for the first uh, first time for us. It's the 11th festival, but uh, you, um, it's so great to have you. We've been waiting for this for many years to host you here, and I see you're going to play and conduct and teach. And I just heard your lesson. It was a fantastic laser-like lesson on the Ravel Sigan, and I feel that you're very passionate about teaching. Thank you, Michael, for inviting us here. It's a great uh, honor and privilege to be in such a fantastic festival. Uh, your generosity and the quality of uh, your programming is really staggering. Uh, for us uh, to be here uh, um, is uh, the time uh, that we take here is really very concentrated because we have uh, a few days here. And so for me, the teaching has always been an uh, important part of my life. Uh, because myself, I had great teachers, uh, the greatest I could uh, imagine uh, for myself, uh, Galina Turchaninova, Professor Braun, and then I studied with many uh, great conductors, uh, uh, Baron Boehm and uh, Rostropovich, uh, among uh, others. Uh, so for me, uh, teaching is, in a way, uh, is giving something back. And uh, when I teach, I also learn a lot uh, from uh, students. So uh, I would say, Mm, that I have uh, three professions, uh, playing violin, conducting and uh, teaching, but uh, probably teaching is the most responsible uh, one. Because uh, with uh, I in uh, five minutes you can give good advice, but you can also give wrong advice uh, to, to the student. So you, you need to be very careful uh, what you say and when you say. And that is why, so for, for me, uh, it's a great opportunity to come here and to, to teach. And now because I know. I noticed uh, during your lesson that, um, of course, everything comes so naturally to you, but you have an amazing ability to analyze what you do and to explain it to the student with the analyzing the bow speed, analyzing the vibrato, the movement. It seems that you have an amazing ability to analyze your own playing in order to pass the message and to see in the, uh, in the students what is lacking. Um, so this is maybe something that's very rare. And uh, are you teaching only at the Menuhin Academy or at master classes other places? I'm teaching in the Royal College of Music and the Menuhin Academy in Switzerland. Uh, and as you know, you, you are yourself a professor and a violinist. Uh, you know uh, how different these two roles are to be performing artist and then uh, to be a teacher. Because w when we perform, of course, we have to analyze uh, a lot. But sometimes if we an analyze too much, uh, it goes against uh, our hands. And we have to feel quite a lot. We have to follow our instincts. Now, when I'm teaching, uh, it's a different process of the brain mm -hmm. uh, because I have to translate everything I do and everything I see in the score uh, to the to student that is in front of me and every time it becomes really personal it becomes uh, about the student and first of all about the composer that I'm teaching if I'm teaching today Ravel or tom tomorrow Mozart or Brahms uh, then it's about th those works we are trying to recreate uh, this time recreate what the composer uh, wanted to say with that music and uh, it's important for students not on only to understand how to interpret the work but how to become one uh, with with the piece and I think that's the greatest challenge because we have the violin we have the bow uh, which is already uh, challenging uh, just to play the violin but if we deal with the greatest works it's in a way becoming an uh, actor becoming that Ravel at the moment uh, and Mozart and so we have to grow to these standards and it's not easy when you are uh, 1920 uh, you need a lifetime experience so i think uh, my modest mission is to uh, to be a, a link uh, between the composer and the, and the student <laughs> important of your Russian roots, your Russian education, your Russian violin school is until now for you. Uh, do you see that as a big part of, uh, of, your, of yourself or just as a beginning? 
Russian school, just to remind uh, all of us here, is that uh, the, the Russian uh, school uh, T took roots in the very famous Franco-Belge. In the Belgium school. Uh, in the Belgium <laughs> school, Isai. yes, Isai, uh, Vietang, and uh, Vinyavsky. So that's why, um, for for me, I'm uh, just a continuation of this uh, great tradition, which became then uh, uh, Russian tradition, and today it's also Chinese tradition as much as American uh, and the German, is uh, because the world is. Uh, is a globalization so we can learn from uh, one another and uh, to carry forward the tradition and the legacy that was left to us uh, from all the great masters is a is a great privilege it's true you're right the, the, the musicians in fact were global before everybody else mozart traveling all around europe was the first yeah. european uh, yeah. uh, citizen we can say yeah well thank you so much wait the student is waiting for you and yes. it's a great honor to have you here thank you thank you